today I'm going to continue my Aircrete foam generation experiment using Franken foam, and I'm going to use two different things to try and put the air pressure into this foam generator. The first one is the inflator that I used last week to pump up the tire, which I used for the foam. And the second thing that I'm going to try is the output of my shop vac. This is like a Green Shorts DIY crime scene photo. And that idea came to me via the comments. So Tim, thanks for that suggestion. Let's see how it goes. So Dravo, Marhaba, and good day mates. Hey, it's Tom from Green Shorts. And I've been playing around with this material called Aircrete for a couple of years now. My foam generator, Franken foam, can be made for about 30 bucks with parts from your local home improvement store. So this is pretty cheap to make, but the most expensive piece of the system is the air compressor. So I've wanted to experiment to see if there's something else I could use to produce the air pressure for foam generation. A couple of weeks ago I tried the tire, which worked, but required me pumping it up. I picked up this inflator to do that. But I find myself asking the question, perhaps I could just skip the whole tire and go straight to the inflator. So I'm going to try that today. And Tim's suggestion of a shop vac is excellent as well because I'm guessing that many of you already have a shop vac. So I'm optimistic that that can work as well. And I picked up a two pack of quarter inch MPT to Schrader valves to make the connections. To connect my Schrader valve to the vacuum hose, I'm going to use this one and a half inch PVC cap and some inner tube and this hose clamp to make an adapter. I'm going to drill a hole and thread in the MPT fitting. To help me get this thread seated nicely, I'm gonna heat the fitting up just a little bit. still soft so I don't want to over tighten that but that'll work there is still a fairly big gap between the the one and seven eighths inch hose and the one and a half inch cap so I put several layers of the inner tube over the hose to increase its diameter at least I think I'm gonna do that this is pretty tight I thought those would stretch to fit on it's a little bit tight, so I think I'm going to try and slice them and then just tape them around. I'm rethinking this approach and I think I'm just going to go with the whole tube since this thing has got to wrap around several times. Might as well just have it be one piece and double layered. That fitting's still hot. I cheat this off the front edge a little bit so it, it's easier to thread in. That's nice and snug. I'm gonna clamp this down with this hose clamp, but I need to create, I think, two relief cuts here so that the cap can actually compress. So I'm gonna do that with the saw real quick. It might be tight enough without this, but I I think that pressure buildup might pop this thing off. So Although this is not a high pressure hose, so we'll see. All right, the fitting is complete. Let's test it out. Of course, I'm gonna hook this up to the air outlet to the vacuum, not the inlet. Because I want the air being pushed, not pulled. 
I'm gonna go eyes and ears on this, JW. Don't know if this thing's gonna blow up on me. Got a little nail here. I'm gonna see if I can't push this valve in. See if I get airflow out. All right, there's airflow, but I don't know if it's enough. The only way to know for sure is make some foam. My foaming solution is one ounce of seventh generation dish soap that has glycerin in it. And then two cups of water. That little bit of agitation will help it mix a little bit without foaming too much. There's some residue on the bottom from my last batch. So I think I didn't get enough of the soap mixed in, which is why I'm stirring it a little bit with this screwdriver. Just to get the detergent a little more evenly dispersed. Now I'm gonna add my solution to Franken foam. Did a test in my last video to see how much foam two cups of solution will make. The answer to that is about seven and a half gallons. But there's also more room in this reservoir for more solution if you need to make more. Or just make the reservoir part bigger if you're making this. All right, and now for the big reveal. All right, so it's producing foam, but at a much slower rate than the air pressure coming out of the tire was, or certainly the compressor. The foam also doesn't seem to be as thick as normal as well. However, I think the results here are inconclusive, because that tiny little air line between the vacuum hose and Franken foam is really restricting the airflow. And I bet if I made a bigger PVC connection there, that there might be a lot more pressure coming through. So I will try this again in another video. Let's move on to the tire inflator. In order to use the inflator, I need to use my second MPT to Schrader connection and go right into the quarter inch fitting here. A little bit of liquid that was past the valve here. Teflon tape. Then it's as simple as popping on the airline, firing it up. Now that's more like it. It's good foam generation. Still not as much as the air compressor was producing, but this looks pretty good. This is also the richness that I'm used to seeing as well. I also like the responsiveness. As soon as I turn off the inflator, it stops making foam. I like this, I'm happy with this. I got my forms ready. And now I'm gonna mix up some cement. One part sand to one part Portland cement. I'm gonna mix these up dry. And then add water. A final combo here, I'm gonna give it a spin. I want this slurry just a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna add a little more Portland.
that looks better. There's some weight to this. Now I'll add about two to three gallons of foam. And I'm looking more for a specific consistency, like cake batter versus a particular volume. And now I'll mix this in. It's hard to judge the foam. <laughs> and I think I've mixed too much in. So I'm gonna actually sprinkle a little more Portland on the top here. Let's see if I can't get this to the right consistency. That dry Portland will absorb some of the foam as water. It will reduce the amount of foam in the mix. Otherwise, I think this was gonna be just too foamy. All right, I'm happy with this. I'm still learning this myself, but I put it out here so you can see what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. So hopefully you don't have to make the same mistakes I do. This feels better than it would have without that extra Portland. So I'm gonna get it in the form. I want to agitate this as little as possible. Normally you want the air bubbles out of cement or concrete. In this case I want the air bubbles to hold up until we've got setting enough to not collapse. Of course these forms are for a prototype for a tabletop fire pit that I'm working on. But this looks great. I'm happy with the consistency. Now I'm gonna get this protected with some plastic. Otherwise the bubbles on the top layer will break down more quickly. My excess in a bowl here. Can't really trial that. <laughs> Alright, I'll let these sit for a couple of days before I unform them and then cure them in water for 28 days. I do have the previous set I've poured that's, that's ready to be taken out of the water. So this has a 28 day cure time, seven days in the forms, and then 21 days or so in this water. So it should be fully cured. I can take it out and let it dry out. Here's this was the piece I had a little bit of trouble with, just that Part pulling off there so no more degradation during the curing process the two pieces will sit kind of like this with the metal canister inside of them to form the tabletop fire pit I'll probably skim coat this with some Portland just to clean that up I'm not exactly sure yet how I'm gonna finish it off still in the prototyping phase air crate on the lens. Of course, this thing's been beat up. Welding sparks. The life of a DIY camera. Thanks for joining me for this continuing adventure in making air crate. And I'm stoked with how well this tire inflator worked to pressurize Frankenfoam. It's a suitable alternative to a tire, that's for sure. 
but also to a full-fledged air compressor. So it kind of depends on what your needs are in your shop. If you just have bikes or cars to inflate tires on on a regular basis, then you might be able to use a tire inflator for more than just making air creep. Of course, at 90 bucks with the battery and the inflator, it's not a bad deal. Although for just a little bit less than twice more, you could have a decent air compressor. If you'd like to make Franken foam, I'll put a link to the build video in the description as well as in a card right here. And of course, if you'd like to get the plans, there's a link for them in the description and at the end of the video. Thanks to my patrons and members for helping make these videos possible. Of course, for all of you who watch and leave comments and express your appreciation and offer me suggestions. This video included a suggestion that I got in the comments and that is always welcome. And part of the reason I put my mistakes in these videos is because a lot of times you have the solutions for me. So thank you for partnering with me in creating this content. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Concrete is not the greenest, but when you're adding air and foam, you can use it in a more efficient way. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next Saturday.